What do you mean, crew? It's your boy, Savon Thomas. We are back with another episode of Coffee and Friends. We are now on season dose of the Gilmore Girls. And I am joined by my friends, the Gilmore Girls crew. We have Amanda Kenyon and Michelle, now Wallace, formerly Munoz before the last pod, now Wallace. And so, um, so yeah, guys, how have you guys been since the last, last time we did this? Great. I mean... Michelle had a really exciting life update. My life update is like I turned 30. So Ooh, that was yeah, you did. <laughs> I woke up feeling like an adult last Man. week. So. How, how, how was 30? Like did, did it feel different? Yeah. Yeah. Like I like literally when I woke up that morning, like the morning of my birthday, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I feel kind of like an adult. Like I've been living on my own since I was 18, but I woke up feeling like an actual adult. Yeah. But it was great. Like Zach threw me a surprise party and completely like shocked the heck out of me. We were supposed to go to dinner and then we ended up going to like deep alum. And I'm like, where the heck are you taking me? It was a little sketch. <laughs> and then we show up to this, um, what was it called? Um, electric shuffle. And I don't know if y'all have heard of it or been there, but it's like a shuffleboard, like place anyways and I looked up and like all of my friends were there well Ethan uh our friend Ethan ruined it because I saw him right before like I, as soon as I walked in so then I realized <laughs> that it was a whole party and yeah it was great <laughs> but I'm an adult so it's been fun Welcome. how's That's it awesome. going let us know for those that are turning 30 here at the end of the year <laughs> you turn 30 this year too Michelle yeah December 30th Apparently, oh, it's my golden birthday. Golden, yeah, your golden birthday. So I was like, maybe I should get a dress and then do something. <laughs> but what do I do? I don't know. That's awesome. I wish I wish I knew about the golden birthday. My, I, I'm on, I'm born on the ninth, so mine was like when I was like nine. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't, you know, like I wish I had like an older date for my golden birthday. But that's pretty cool. Thirty on the thirtieth is pretty awesome. Thirty on the thirtieth, yeah. It's kind of. Uh, I'm excited for it. I don't know what I'm, what's gonna happen because it's December 30th, so it's like you know the end of the year. Christmas has passed, and it's New Year's as well. So most people are with their families. <laughs> so it'll we'll be interesting. Like, like New Year's party slash Michelle's birthday celebration. That is a possibility for sure. Yeah. <laughs> is that make it make it like a 72 hour rager of like birthday? <laughs> Plus New Year's Eve, plus New Year's Day. Just like a 72 hour, just oh my God. and people just stay over at your house. They don't leave, like bring clothes, <laughs> bring everything, alcohol, bring the works. Yeah. Everybody, 72 okay. hours is just like craziness. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to think about that one for sure. <laughs> You're invited, both of you. Let's go. Party. <laughs> I would tell, I, I'm I'm 100 percent down for that. So don't tell me I'm invited. I will. I will show up with a bag. Yeah. <laughs> give me give me a floor in a in a couch cushion. Like I used to do with my I don't know if you guys like what the oh, sleeping, sleeping bag. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. Not sleeping bag. I it's used to go with, Yeah. Like, a little sliver, even like like a like a piece of paper or something. Right. <laughs> or a curtain. You have a curtain right there. You're like, let me try to use this curtain as a freaking, you know. That was the back in the day, the good old time. <laughs> when you didn't have any you just freezing your butt off in your friend's living room. I know. I remember that. You didn't okay. experience that, Michelle? What? You didn't experience that growing up? I wasn't allowed to do sleepovers. I was oh. uh, severely sheltered. <laughs> you not know, when you're not allowed to do things, you don't really miss out until people start talking about it. So, like, same thing with kind of like, it sounds really sad. This is not sounding really great. But <laughs> my birthday is at the end of the year, after Christmas and before New Year's. So, mm -hmm everyone's you know hanging out with their family doing their own thing and so as a kid my parents always made it like a point to make sure everybody's birthday was just as amazing as the last one mm -hmm. especially mine because I've never had a birthday party you know like I've never hung out with friends for a birthday or anything like that so yeah no you know there's just a lot of things I've never experienced <laughs> I'm going to I go think on. my first real slumber party was like at the bachelorette party the week before the wedding. That was my first real experience of having that mm. as an adult. So, you know, it was fun. It was great. <laughs> I'm going to go. Sorry, go ahead, man. I didn't catch you off. 
No, I was going to say you didn't miss much like that. Like Good. you remember that part of the sleepover where you were just cold all night. And then, I mean, maybe. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible, but it's a core memory. Like you never forget it. Like you always like look back and like, dang, that really sucked. But I had a great time with my friends. But I was going to say, I was going to say, I'm going to go on a limb and say, you probably have never seen Harry Potter. Who, me? Yeah. Oh, I've seen Harry Potter. I oh. love Harry Potter. I feel, oh, like every, no. I feel like everybody's parents are like, you can't do this, you can't do that. For some reason, Harry, I mean, I understand why. It's like a lot of witchcraft and yeah. Christian culture is like, you know, obviously. But it's like, I feel like a lot of people are like, you know, don't, parents, don't watch, don't watch Harry Potter. Yeah, no, my parents were down to watch Harry Potter with me. It was when... Was it who was who was the the first um, the first bad guy that when he turned around he had like Snape on his head? My parents were like, "You don't Voldemort. need to see that right now." <laughs> or, or Voldemort, sorry. <laughs> he they were they just covered my eyes and they're like, "Okay, it's done." And I was yeah. like, "I want to see it," and you know, whatever. But yeah, no, they were they were down for it. <laughs> and you know, I've not seen Harry Potter. You've never seen you it. Haven't? I think I might have seen like one one episode, one movie, maybe. I don't, yeah. No. They kind of blend you, together you, after a while. Would you watch it? Uh, yeah. That sounds like a no. I know, I was very reluctant, <laughs> yes. Like, I would. But. Given the opportunity, I guess. But, there's like a, I feel like there's a but there. Yeah, there is a but. You're, and after the but. You're holding something but, back. But I'm not going to just like. Oh, I don't have anything to do. I'm just watch Harry Potter. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I get that. I mean, I understand. It's a long, it's long. You know, you have to dedicate time. But this around this time is when you dedicate that time. Yeah, yeah. similar to how you love the Gilmore Girls in the fall. A lot of people love to watch Harry Potter in the fall. Yeah, that's very true. What house are you, Savon? Hufflepuff. <gasps> So, you're like, no, you're Hufflepuff. <laughs> no, I love I, I mean, Ravenclaw's fine. I mean, Gryffindors are like the goody two shoes, and Slytherins are the evil people. So I feel like Ravenclaw's fine. That's true. Uh, I feel Ravenclaw is the best of all of them, and I stand by that hands down. I need, I need, a, uh, I need a man to start singing the blues clues. We just got a letter song. We just got a letter. Oh, yeah. Wonder who it's from. <laughs> You've been accepted to Hogwarts, Amanda. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, wow. Amanda. Welcome to the family, Amanda. You're a wizard, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what they say? You're a wizard, Harry? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, I just asked you a big card from Zach. Nice. <laughs> I think it was on the 16th. <laughs> but even, I guess... It's a really good card. I'll read it to you. It says, we make a great team. You've got the beauty and the brains, and I've got the best wife a guy could ask for. Oh, that's, that's a so card. cute. And then he gave you me a, a great guy. You chose and a great guy. Zach's my guy. I love Zach. I did. He gave me a coupon that says, voucher for one Caribbean cruise with your husband. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Can set the I bar high, my boy. My oh boy set the bar <laughs> high. Yeah, for real. Wait, what? Man. <laughs> This your king in. I shake your hand, sir. Yeah, we're going on a cruise in March, apparently. Nice. That's, awesome. That's awesome. Anyway, so so Amanda turned thirty. That was her life update. Michelle, um, um, something happened in your life this in the past? Oh yeah, you know, no big deal. Just got married. Ah! <laughs> no longer Moon Yells, now Mrs. Wallace. What was that mm -hmm. experience like? Uh, amazing and in actuality uh we actually got married twice so oh we were we got married june 21st our actual anniversary and then we had the wedding gotcha the 20th of july so nobody knew so what? technically been i've here. been at wallet <laughs> i've been here you just you know you were kind of late to the party but yeah <laughs> um, yeah for real so thank you today <laughs> so what, what was yeah, it like? Then, what was it like planning it, and then what was it like experiencing it? Man, um, planning it was actually I I like planning. Planning is fun. I think 
execution is a little bit more difficult, especially when you don't have as many hands available to help you execute what you're wanting to get done. Mm -hmm. But planning was fine. I actually really enjoyed planning every other month. We, uh, I, I made it so that every other month we had a break. So every other month we just didn't do anything wedding stuff. We just didn't even talk wedding stuff. And then it would be on wedding, off wedding, you know, um, so I just want it to be very seamless and like give us a chance to enjoy the process and not loathe it or regret anything or anything like that. Um, and then executing was a different story because there were so there were so many girls, you know, helping me out, but there was still not, not enough people to help me out, like set everything up. And yeah. uh, so it was just a little different. But the day of. It was still very fun. I remember every single second. I will admit, I heard so many people walking up to me and telling me, you know, that strawberry margarita, it was amazing. And I only got one sip of it. I didn't drink <laughs> on my wedding day. Hey, so, that's tough. <laughs> that's tough. I wanted to try some. <laughs> and it, was amazing. Was amazing. it was amazing. I, I had to. Oh, great. To... <laughs> <Aww>. I'm jealous. <laughs> That's and awesome. Then, uh, How was yeah, the, so it was, it was good time. How was the honeymoon? It was amazing. Um, it almost everything was like white. Uh, it almost kind of looked like that Greece uh picture that everybody wants to go in that kind of space where everything's white and blue. Um, it was like uh gosh, what was it? I think it's like Marquis in Los Cabos. And it was really nice. It was an all-inclusive adults only resort. Nice. And I was just telling Amanda, like, you know, I know the Lord is like, kids are in your future. But after experiencing an adults only resort, um, I asked a lot of questions. <laughs> I wanted to double check <laughs> because it was really cool. And to experience, you know, not just not just a vacation and all that, but to have time to really dedicate to your relationship is really special and not to have kids around or and no problem with kids obviously but um to have that ability to not have any interruption like that or parents being parents you know um yeah. it was really special it was really great so we had a a little house on one side it was like there was a kitchenette a living room and a dining area and on the other side it was a, just the whole bedroom obviously the bathroom and then when you went outside to the like the backyard there was a little plunge pool so it was just cool to have that you know it's just like a little house it was nice I enjoyed it it was great oh fun uh, I want to go on a honeymoon I have to wait till March I guess <laughs> you guys not have a honeymoon <laughs> after your wedding well no we eloped and then we just I mean we were in Washington and we stayed there for like is that kind of eloping like you guys you know, it was planned I feel like in my mind eloping is like we don't plan it we just go get married at like the courthouse or we go get married in like uh Vegas. Elvis, <laughs> Vegas or something like that. That's like my mind, that's eloping. Like you guys had like a planned wedding with your family and friends. We didn't our fr friends weren't there. <laughs> oh sorry, our, sorry, sorry, just family. I apologize. It's just our immediate parents. I mean, we planned it so they could be there, but like we didn't really plan anything. The only thing that we did was like paid for a photographer and then um an Airbnb and a private chef to come cook us dinner so it was like minimal planning where it's like michelle has to plan a whole wedding you know and i'm like i don't want to do that to. let's just go travel and like you know we explored and did some stuff but i wouldn't count it as a honeymoon you know because yeah no that's fine i don't want a honeymoon yeah. either but I, like the, the thought in my mind of eloping i guess is just tied to elvis and vegas and people being like i'm getting married <laughs> like i'm just gonna go shotgun wedding like you know what i mean <laughs> You can still plan an elopement. Interesting. I didn't know. Hey, we out here. You know, we'll, 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 maybe I'll maybe I'll do the same. Twenty twenty three. But cool. My only life update is I'm moving. I'm moving back from Fort Worth to the colony. So I will be back in the the pause the D, uh, Dallas. <laughs> um. So I'll be I'm moving from Fort Worth to Dallas. I know you're maybe out here. I, I I laugh because I was talking to our friend any and uh, he makes a joke because i i was not planning on moving for full work because i love it where i'm at right now like just everything's like walkable i like to have my gym like literally 0.3 miles away i can just walk to my gym and back 
I have like a little park next to me. I walk every pretty much every single day with like next to a river. And I love that. I love the grocery stores across the street. I walk to the grocery store. Like everything is walkable. And I just I just love it. Like it's like, it's like my little oasis. And like, and it wasn't until I went to church and like I was in prayer and God was like, nah, fam, you gotta get up out of here. I need you to move here. Uh and I was like, no. And so any any jokes, he's like, Yeah, man, it took an act of God uh for you to move. And I'm like, dang, it actually did take an act of God for me. I <laughs> <laughs> look at that you, so, you were like thriving in Fort Worth though I feel like you've become like a Fort Worth human bro I, I have. <laughs> it's, just, it's great like the stockyards that's my backyard it's a great song too <laughs> but um I, I love the stockyards you know it's like I go there get coffee all the time like I love the stockyards it's, it's dope um and then Sundance Square right there and then just 7th Street that's where I live 7th Street and it's just like it's a vibe all the time and sometimes, you know, it's funny too, like, cause I'm not a big party guy. Like, I, I'll go like get a drink here and there during football season, but like sometimes when I'm like truly bored, truly bored, and I want to like reminisce of like old Savon. I'll, I'll there's a there's an insomnia cookies next to the bar. So there's a ton of bars off seven. There's insomnia cookies. I will go walk and just watch watch the drunk people on Seventh Street on a Friday night while I go get cookies, cause I'm like I'm I'm <laughs> like, I'm boring. So I'll go walk. Especially, I did this on Halloween specifically. This was great. I went to go walk to get cookies. And I saw like, all these costumes. I was like, look at all these college kids out here in their costumes. It was so fun. That's me being 30. <laughs> Welcome to 30 year old life, Amanda. That's 30 year old life. Is, unless you Wait, want to go are you, You're not 30. I are you? One in November. No way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Oh, uh, welcome back, Michelle. Sorry. <laughs> I was not here. 31 in November. I mean, we've been part of the three of club. That's wild. But yeah, that's my wild. update. So I'm moving from my little oasis back to the colony. And uh, I'm close to you guys. And also, I do point on like having my coffee and comments like set up to where it's like a more of a studio. So like instead of having just like it's like I'm have like a couch, a little couch, my my background, and so maybe we could like do it all like together more often. Maybe we shall see. We shall see. That'd be awesome. Uh, my good sister, my sister has podcast equipment, so I'm going down to Austin sometime next month. Go grab that from her, and then uh, mm -hmm. we'll okay, so I'm through. We are talking about Gilmore Girls season two. Appreciate all the life updates. It's fun talking life and. Each month, kind of getting to know more and more about what's going on in people's lives. Um, but let's talk about Gilmore Girls. So season two was a continuation, obviously, of Rory and Lorelai's life. Um, who do you guys want to start with? What what character do you guys want to start with? Because both of them had like an interesting. Obviously, Rory's life kind of just went crazy, but Lorelai too. Like her her character development is kind of interesting throughout the season. Uh, her like dealing with Rory and, and things of that nature but who do you guys want to start with talking about uh, their interests, their love interests their life, how things change uh, let's let's start with yeah she's easier to deal with right now <laughs> <laughs> Lorelai so Lorelai yes so let's start with Max Medina so I feel like like Laura kind of pissed me the whole season Lorelai kind of pissed me off So <laughs> let me just get that out there like me watching it the first time, like first time watching it, Lorelai's like she acts like a child all the time. Like, yes. so mm -hmm. like the, the whole Mac situation, I'm like excited for her because she finds a good guy that likes her, right? And then she's 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 second guessing it. She calls Christopher, Christopher, and then she she, she blows it like she and then she ends it. I'm like, why'd you call Christopher? Like, what does Christopher mean to you in your life? Which obviously, obviously she talks about it later. But like, I don't know, Lorelai, I, I feel like. Her and Mag should have worked out. Like, I get the shows, the show, and like, you know, the, the show writers have their kind of thing there, but she made me mad. I'm like, bro, Max is a great dude. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of pissed me off. What'd you guys start? Let's start with well, Lorelai and Max. Let's start there. No, I love Max. Like, I think we talked about it in the last episode, but he was like the perfect, like, man. <laughs> and it's like, it, I don't know. As you watch it, I think like, you kind of learn, or I don't know, maybe me, like I kind of put myself in like their shoes. And I think it's just like, in reality, her coming to grips with like the fact that she would have to settle down and like be an adult if she married Max probably was like, yeah, maybe she's not ready for that type of commitment. 
anyways, it is frustrating because I mean, anybody that watches the show is going to love Max. Like who you can't say really a bad thing about him because he hasn't done anything. Whereas like Chris, you know, they have their history and he, like he didn't, you know, he wasn't there for her. So you already, you're like, no, you can't really be team like him yet, you know, but yeah. whatever. It's annoying, but it's Lorelai. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very much the same. Like, yeah, I, I love Max Medina. Uh, he's he's great. He's a great guy. Like any of any woman would be happy to have a guy like that, you know. Um, but I also am kind of content with them not working out because I don't think that Lorelai deserves him like I I think we've talked about it before where like you know Lorelai is kind of childish she does she doesn't know she doesn't want to grow up she doesn't know how to grow up and if you want to have that kind of a relationship you have to get a grip on life and like be an adult you know like you can't keep walking around like you're a child anymore you have a child like you need to step up in some way and you're not wanting to you know and yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Everybody pissed me off in this in this season. I did not care for this season very much at all. <laughs> so Lorelai is like she she let me not say like she's a bad mom. She's she's a great mom. Obviously, she puts a roof over Rory's head. She's a great friend to yeah. Rory. But it's just like like with the Mac situation, but like throughout the entire season, like I feel like she just she just it just I don't know. It just it just felt like she was just really childish the entire season. Like like the situation like when she talked to Emily, like her conversation with Emily. And that's the mom's name, right, Emily? Yeah. Okay, making sure. So the situation with uh, Emily, like, she she always was, like, it just, like, revert back to this teenage angst, right? Like, I'm just, like, just just have a normal conversation with your mom. Like, those episodes where she hung out with her dad, was, like, you can't have yeah. a conversation with your dad. Like, you can't just hang out with your dad for a day. I understand, like, things went down, they got pissed or whatever, but it's, like, it's still your dad. Like, you can, you can be around your dad for more than 24 hours without, like, freaking out you know and I, he was a little overbearing we'll talk about richard uh but he like i was just like i was like what is this like why is she acting like such a child like you know what i mean like that's those are the things about the season where i was like what is wrong with lorelei like why yeah. is she acting this way i wonder if sometimes like because because i did kind of put myself in her shoes because i've been there once upon a time right where like sometimes you walk i don't know about you guys but sometimes you walk back home into your parents home and it feels like everything kind of shifts and you kind of go back in time and you're still the little kid Mm -hmm. your mom's still going to treat you like a kid your dad's still going to treat you like his you know his only kid you know like they're going to cradle you and love you whatever right but I think in this um for Emily and Richard and you know um Lorelai I think it kind of shows that nobody's gotten over anything yeah you know nobody is willing to let it go but nobody's willing to move forward and everyone's just stagnant in a piece of history still no matter how many years pass by it just seems like you know i want to be mad because i want to be mad you hurt my feelings you know and this is where we live this is our emotional state and this is just what it is this is our life and i think that is obviously very unhealthy but you know i think that's kind of you know nobody knows how to deal with the situation nobody wants to communicate and talk and you know taiwo said it last time everybody needs therapy (laughs) (laughs) but like at the same time though i mean if you were lorelei and she's holding on to like this little glimpse of like this little glimmer of hope that she's still gonna have like a family with chris and rory so it's like you know I guess like in, you know, in her mind, it, it may be worth it if Rory could have like her mom and dad together as a family. Cause I think, right. I think it was in the season where she maybe. It yeah, it be yeah, it no, no, it was this season. It was this season. But she asked Rory, like, did you ever picture us together? Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah. so in the back of her mind, it's like, this has always been an option. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also, grow up. yeah. I, I wonder too, if, uh, I, I really truly don't remember a lot of the show. So watch <laughs> rewatching these is like really clicking and like getting me back into the oh, I don't like this character. Or, you know, I can't believe they did this. And there were situations in this season where I was like, oh, when did this happen? You know, and so 
Um, but I, I wonder if like, if Lorelai's ever going to grow up enough to have a, a man in the house to be able to be okay with, yes, this was my life at one point and I'm willing to have a husband in my house in our house and it not be only mine. Cause I feel like they've been in this situation, just Lorelai and Rory in this house for so long. They've, they've kind of set their standards this way. Sometimes I wonder if maybe subconsciously Lorelai is not willing to have, like she wants it, but she doesn't want it that bad to have a guy in the house because it's going to disrupt her lifestyle. And then she has to create a new lifestyle. But what does that mean? You know, does that mean I'm going to have to work harder? You know, and I don't think she's that person. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I, I wonder if, she, honestly, I wonder if she's ever going to get married. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. I don't know. Y'all know. I don't remember. I'm just telling you right now. I well, Amanda, Amanda for <laughs> sure knows. So she knows what goes down. Amanda, don't make any faces. You know, so, <laughs> so she, because she, she told me last season that, you know, this Dean was a good first boyfriend, which we'll get to Dean. Dean pissed me off. <laughs> Dean was so neat. Just because yeah. he's a first boyfriend doesn't mean he's not the last. Mm, I, I I don't want to be a last name Mark. He was so needy this entire show. I was like, "What is wrong?" This oh looks like it's like a normal kid to like super. But, like it makes like, sense though. He's so annoying though. It's so, so annoying. Like, so I'm like, crazy. I'm like, are all kids like this? Like, did I date in high school? Yeah, if I did, fourteen voicemails. That's crazy. Okay. Have you not sent like a million texts and been like, "I wish I could have undone all of those"? Same thing. You know, same thing. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Fourteen text messages. Well, you're not a girl, so that's different. Yeah, but like that. Okay, we, we'll we'll just keep it. We're going to go everywhere. We're just we'll just bounce around. <laughs> so Laura, Laura, we done with Lorelai. She heard because I feel like Lorelai's character was more centered around like taking care of Rory. Like she's got some angst with Jess. She she obviously you know Luke whatever situation. Her and Christopher had a little thing for a little bit, but then obviously. That got taken care of. But I feel like Lorelai's character, like as far as like love interest, took a back burner after the whole Mac situation. And you just kind of yeah. saw her develop like relationship with her mom a little bit more, kind of sort of. Uh, but then that also made me with, really frustrated. That when, relation that when they went to the spa, like mm -hmm. the mom, like Emily, <laughs> it made me really frustrated. I was it made me almost want to cry because I was like, man, your mom is trying to like crying, and you so badly don't want it, but you complain about wanting it. But you don't want like what does I'm so confused <laughs> like I it just frustrated me so bad and then you know it just didn't I, I was so confused and I was so like you know what I'm kind of fed up with Lorelai in this season because yeah. you know this is just so crazy to me to think like yeah I get it there's there's going to be strife and conflict yeah. but you know welcome to your relationship we have to get out of this you know, and this is the way to do it, you know, like the fact that her mom was like willing to do this spa thing and was kind of excited about it. And then she's like, she's, she's not that kind of person to just have a good time. She's very structured, you know, she's in a certain way. And, you know, like Lorelai kind of snapping at her because she's talking, I get it. You want to relax, whatever, but obviously if there was a if there was communication and they're like open with what they were seeking when they were going to the spa, maybe there would have been a better situation going on there. But you know, like I don't know, it just that made me so mad. I was like, this woman is trying to love you. Let her love you. I don't know. That episode I was Team Lorelai. I was like, Emily. Oh, I was like, Amanda, go off. You Amanda have face out of here. I'm doing a spa day. My mom's not coming with me. And if she's going to talk to me, she can go talk to herself. Like, I love my mom, but my mom's not annoying. But, like, if my mom can like, Emily, though, I would be like, right? no, your own room, your own thing. Like, we can have dinner together. That's cool. But, like, you don't need to be annoying me all the time. Like, she was, I also think, though, like, she was a little manipulative whenever she, you know, gifted That's the week to, you know, Lorelai. So it's like, she wasn't expecting her to be there. And so that annoyed me. And I was like, that sucks. Yeah. So what I didn't like though was Lorelai knew her mom didn't want to dance with that dude because she was gonna feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. and she pushed her to do it. I was like, ma'am, say that she's yeah. married. She also was wearing this big diamond ring too. 
I'm like, bro, right? do you not see this dude this is huge really rock trying. on her finger? Like, does she need to tell you she's married? Could you not just see that? But I guess maybe he didn't care. You know, yeah. like he's gonna shoot a shot regardless. But I was like, she didn't care. Did you not see him talking to another woman? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he would talk I, to I, all the other ladies <laughs> in there. Yeah, yeah that was it, annoying. That was weird. I was like, Lorelai, your mom's married. Like, like, you want her to act like a single woman out here? Like, I don't understand what you want. It's just, I get it's just a dance, but still, it's kind of like, uh, like the dude had different implications related. So it wasn't just like, I want to go and dance with you. Like, he was, he started off hitting on her before he asked her to dance. So it's like, right. You know, so, I don't know. Maybe I just, I can see. Her. I can understand what Lorelai was trying to do, but it just, it isn't, it wasn't going to ever work because it's just not your relationship. She was just trying to do what she would do with her girlfriends. Hey, go dance with that guy. It's fine. You know, no big deal. you right. And, and like, she was trying to relate to her the way she would a friend, but that's just not their dynamic. And if they talked, maybe they would figure it out faster. Yeah. <laughs> whatever so Lorelai's character interesting this whole season but again I feel like she took a back burner obviously to Rory because Rory was the center of the drama for season two um and so I will start with Dean Dean just pissed me off but I understand why like I as a guy I can understand like being jealous you know what I mean but like it comes to a point where it's like maybe just not my personality but give the girl some space he was paging her he was calling her, leaving messages. He was feeling insecure, and obviously he realized that you know she liked she liked Jess. But it's like, bro, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe I'm just different. But what did you guys think about Dean this season? Because I feel like he did Amanda first. Most. <laughs> he was very annoying. I've I've never really truly like been team Dean. Like I guess last season he was you know fine because it was like a cute like fresh relationship. Like they're so young. But he reminded, yeah, I don't know. I've like you did. I've dated somebody like that when I was like super young, where they're just like so annoying and just like man, and yeah. like someone that is like that and is like trying to like be friends with your mom and find out information about you from your mom is just like ick, you know. You just don't do that. So it was um, quite interesting to see how um, things kind of turned not in Dean's favor. Um, but I don't know if I sh- should say anything about Jess yet, but, um, no, you go, go off with Jess. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I'm kind of like, maybe Rory just needs to like a change, but is Jess really like the answer to that? I mean, he's, he's, he's not like her cup of tea. My, my, my cup of tea for her. I was about to say, I was like, I was like <laughs> he is though, because he's very, he's very, like, they have yes. very intellectual conversations. They do, they do, yeah. So it's like, is he not, is, he's not because everybody else, but when he's with her, he's good. Yeah, he's like a completely different person with her though. Yeah. But why can't he, but like, does he need to go right. and, like terrorizing the town of Stars Hollow? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> the poor town. <laughs> you know, I don't think I, I don't know. I think I felt really sorry for Dean. You know, I think I just felt kind of sad for him because I think every single person, obviously no one's talking to each other about anything, but I think every single person in their own perspectives knows that this is about to be the end of a relationship because Dean is obviously like, Oh my gosh, I have to hold on to this. You know, I know this guy likes you, you know, whatever. Right. And so he's trying to do the thing that most people don't really enjoy and just be overbearing and like whatever. Right. But he's, he's trying to grasp on for dear life because he loves Rory. He, he wants to keep Rory in his life. Right. And, you know, with Lorelai, she's very aware because she's seen things, you know, and she's obviously paying attention to what's going on and, and how, um, Gosh, what was it? What was it that Rory lost? Her bracelet. Yeah. And like him coming out of the room, all that whole stuff. So like, it's not, you know, everybody's aware that something's going on. Even Rory's aware, but she's like so overcompensating that everyone's kind of overdoing their their own thing, you know? I don't know if I think that 
Dean was totally annoying. I think that I just fully understand where he's coming from. I don't know if I would say, oh my gosh, he's so annoying. I would say, yeah, I could see that. However, you know, if he, he's somebody, talk to him. <laughs> that would be different. <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't the case instead. I mean, even at like yeah. regarding Jess, like she was doing, was it this season? She did the play with Tristan or is that the first season? No, well, yeah, no, this, this was the season because uh, Tristan. Oh, yeah, was it this one? Yeah. You're right. It's like, yeah. you know, you can't, it's like for school, like you, like you were practicing right. at school and he's like, I'm going to be there because I'm going to watch this guy. It's just like, dude, chill, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it sucks though, too, because man, like being a kid, you know, knowing that there are other attractive guys that are attracted to you, uh, to your girlfriend, are, you know, like at any moment you know what do I have to offer I'm sure is what Dean would be thinking because he's like not the smartest guy in the world. <laughs> and and he's just the bag boy <laughs> you know yep. and like she's going to these this school that has like other people that like challenge her mentally you know and and then there's then there's Jess <laughs> yep. that's like has the bad boy exterior is the bad boy but it also has the mind of like somebody that who would go to Chilton you know so it's it is this weird it's such a weird collide for them. I like Jess barely. I would say I don't care for him. <laughs> like I think that he's has great potential, but I feel like that's where he's gonna stay, you know. Um, do I like Jess for Rory? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't care for him very much. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, Rory Rory's choice in guys is interesting because she's battling between the like she she she's now she's kissed Three guys now in this show. Like first, first yeah, was, what the heck? <laughs> the first was Dean, and they broke up, and she kissed Tristan. Then now she kissed Jess at the very end, which is the the kind of the season finale. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting to see like Rory's like trajectory of like this like nerdy girl that just worried about going to Harvard, and now she's like experiencing boys, and it's kind of now she's not going crazy. I would say that, but it's like she's kind of like you know trying to figure life out, and it's it's you you guys talked about it last season, but I'm seeing the dichotomy now of like. She doesn't know how to because her mom doesn't do well handling guys as well. So it's like it's interesting to see um, this season how Rory's doing. Um, but then also like she's like her friendships kind of take a hit too. It's like also you by the way, Michelle, you mentioned last season. I can see her in Paris becoming friends. That's crazy. I didn't <laughs> think that was gonna happen. You know, but, <laughs> but it's it's interesting to kind of navigate like life because Lane kind of has some situations go down like cheerleading and she didn't take that well. And then yeah. her and Paris are starting to like become a little bit more friends. Style interesting to see too. Like Paris covered for her during yeah. the whole like yes situation. So uh, I don't know. Rory is very interesting to, to me this season because I'm like she's not being her normal self. Like she's lying a little bit. She's like you know trying to figure things out. So I don't know. Like, Rory Rory was I didn't dislike Rory, but I was like, what are you doing, girl? Like what what are you, what are you doing? Season two, a uh, couple of things I want to note. One, you talked about Kirk last season. I didn't really know who he was. This season, I saw him more. I love uh -huh. Kirk. He's great. I love Kirk. Kirk <laughs> might, be my, he might be my favorite character. But he's no. Like, he just shows up out of nowhere. And he does the fun, the funniest thing. It's like, he's everything. Like, he's a photographer. He's a this. He's doing that. Like, you know, he handles the landscaping or whatever. It's just like, you are literally everywhere. <laughs> and it's so funny. I I think that's so charming because that brings like the small town, like, you know, like goofiness of Stars Hollow that people like fall in love with when they watch the show. It's like people like Kirk that make it all exciting for us. Yeah. So Kirk, I love Kirk in the show. He's starting these for me as a first time viewer. I'm like, okay, Kirk's funny. Taylor, Taylor, I think is the old guy that buys buying up all the different houses. He's annoying as piss. Um I dislike him with a fiery passion. <laughs> I don't like him at all. Oh, he's so cool. like he knows how to get under everybody's skin. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then he was, a, he was a he was a asshole to uh to uh to Luke, my boy Luke. My, that's my favorite character, Luke. But to my boy Luke, when the whole like his uncle died or whatever it was, but like because they y'all like, we don't really like him, you know. All we're gonna go do is funeral, which they end up doing it anyway. But like I was like, man, that's kind of shitty. Um, mm -hmm. supposed to be the town guy, and there's a guy in town that you can't do a funeral for. Right. <laughs> I was in your group too, like. Um, but then Emily, Emily and Richard. So this is the last thing I, I, we kind of wrap up on now that you guys thoughts like overall the season, but like 
Richard was very overbearing this entire season. And I was like, why are you being this way? Like with the whole situation with the car um, and then like, you know, him going to Lorelai's job and him like telling her I do that. And then like, even though he did a great job with the presentation for Rory and her friends, I was like, why are you so invested in this? Like, I get you you're retired, but like, why, <laughs> like bro, why are you so overbearing? I, I don't understand that. Emily too, but Richard just kind of pissed me off too this season. I was like, bro, chill out, go go have fun. You couldn't have fun. You couldn't go to the golf course during the on the Wednesday because you're like, well, who, who goes to the golf course at three p.m.? It's like you, you're retired. Go live your life. <laughs> like, quit bothering people. I saw I was watching it, and I saw that was my thoughts. I was like, bro, Richard, go do something with your life, bro. Go go live life. Go have fun. But um, you know, any, any thoughts on like any side characters, Richard, and Emily, Kirk? Taylor, anybody that you like you guys want to talk about? No, I think like maybe Richard and Emily, I think like you can kind of see them because they're coming back into, you know, Lorelai and Rory's life, right? Like they were involved previous, right? Yeah. My understanding. So it's like now you see the little things like you were talking about Richard. Well, he didn't really have like a solid relationship with Lorelai. So I feel like now he's like trying to play like the father figure in their lives again and it's just yeah it's interesting to see because there's like little things that he does that you know um like to Rory that's like oh as if it were as if she was his daughter but yeah. he's line. I feel like you hear sometimes people in real life uh kind of like those that have kids that kind of screwed up with having their own kids when those kids have their kids they like treat their grandchildren like as if they're they are their own to uh kind of make us i guess kind of apologize but also make the situation better i guess try to like mend that relationship that they couldn't have once upon a time so i feel like that's what maybe what's happening but also rory gets along with them a lot better than lorelei like they just she would never have wanted that life for herself so and rory is the kid that they would have wanted, you know, yeah. I think. Yeah, I agree. She definitely, because she's definitely doing the things that Richard loves to see. Like she wants to go to Harvard. She has interest in Harvard and they're yeah. trying to make sure that she actually does that stuff. Even though he's like a Yale guy. He's like, he's like, she can look at Yale too. You know, it's like, no, nah, she wants to go to Harvard. <laughs> but overall, I, I am starting like, so this is my, I'll let you guys give your thoughts on season two and we'll wrap up. But like, for me, I like the season more season one. Because I feel like I, I, there's more of a story I understand, more character developments happening. Less, I, I want to see more of Luke and Lorelai in the next season, season three. But I, I feel like the the I really love the banter. Like them going back and forth was hilarious to me. Like every single season has always been hilarious, but this season, like, is like especially towards the end of it, I was like, man, this is hilarious. And somebody said something where it's like, oh, it was Sherry. Sherry was like, I need a cup of coffee to keep up with you guys. Because they were all three of them like going back and forth with their like jokes about yeah. things, and I was like, "That's exactly how I feel about the show." Like, you need to, like, they're so it's so it's such quick wit, so rapid, actor. so rapid, and I love it. Like, they'll just be talking about something, and you know, like go into like a TV show or a movie or stuff, or, like quote from something, and I, it just makes me laugh. So, like for me, I I am trying to like the show because of the banter and then the storyline playing out as well. So, I like season two more than season one. We'll see how season three goes. Uh, but that's my thoughts. So what are you guys' thoughts as we wrap up? Yeah, I think like, I don't know. I mean, I think it's great. Like, I'm excited. You're more invested in the characters as you're getting to know the town more. You're getting to know, like, how each of the people kind of, like, fit into their lives. Like, you see um, um, Suki and Lorelai's friendship kind of, like, grow more in, in the season. And, like, you know, the supportive role that she plays, like, you know, she calls off her wedding and then Suki's just, like, changes everything and, like, tells the town and does all that stuff for her. And so, like, you have a way more, like, you're more invested in the characters. And, I mean, with, you know, the whole, like, love interest of Rory and Lorelai, it's like, you don't know what's going to happen. So, TBD. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle? <laughs> Wrap us up. Um, uh, I didn't care for this season. <laughs> it just felt really boring. Um, I think, you know, it it is what it is. And I'm excited for season three. <laughs> I will say side note. Um, 
yeah, it was it was really interesting to me when uh uh Rory was freaking out that it was her fault that uh what's his name broke the car. Yes. Like yes, just you know, destroyed the car and, and got her hurt. It was really weird to me to think that she would take that and be like, oh, it's my fault. This is my fault too. It was an interesting thought. Just, I wonder why. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have much to go off of that, but I just like, I remembered that that happened. Yeah. This is such, this season. I'm sorry. Look, this season is hard to remember what happened because like, there's not there's not like one really intense storyline. There's not like one thing going on. It's a lot of just character development, yep. uh, you know? And so it feels like the middle of a book where for me, the middle of a book is typically where I stop reading a book because it's so boring. <laughs> and then I just, I just, it's just because of the character development in the middle of a book is so, you know, anyway, whatever, moving yep. on. I'm ready for season three. <laughs> cool. Well, I mean, this so, is a quicker pod. I will say, yeah. Netflix decided to... Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, what are you saying? You said Netflix decided to what? Hmm? Netflix decided to what? Netflix decided to play the first episode. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Netflix decided to play the first episode of season three while I just finished the last episode of season two and I started screaming so <laughs> throwing that out there I started freaking out so <laughs> I did it that's it I feel like you guys y'all guys always gonna give spoilers to every single to every single season for me okay um, well you know what <laughs> that's funny I didn't but anyway, any spoilers today that will mean kind of but quicker pod today for season two obviously like Michelle said there was a lot of stuff happened but nothing happened but a lot of stuff happened right the biggest thing being just and Rory in their relationship. So I'm excited to see what season three goes. I appreciate everybody for watching. We'll, we'll do a season three recap uh, within the next month. Check that out. Thanks for tuning in to the episode of Coffee and Comics. Coffee with friends.